Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to December 20th, 2022. This is the only one we're going to get, so we'll make it a good one. My name is Dave Shrine. This here is Steve Edwards. And uh, for the next 60 minutes, we're going to be talking mules and donkeys. That's right. The internet is consumed with the mule and the donkey, and we are at the forefront of that parade uh, leading the discussion. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, we know you could be any number of places today. And the fact that you would spend a few minutes of your day with us, uh, well, it just makes our day and we're just ecstatic to have you. Um, the way this works is every week we get together to talk mules and donkeys. And uh, there's really only three things we ask. Number one, that you share your name, where you're watching from and what the weather is like today. So go ahead and do that right now. We want to see you. We want to say hello, say Merry Christmas to you. The second thing is that you put in the comment section, whether on Facebook or YouTube, any and every mule or donkey question that you've got. We don't want it to be frustrating to work with one of these animals. We don't want it to be something that you want to tear your hat up over and throw in the way and turn in your boots and give back your belt buckle. No, 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 no. We want it to be fun and rewarding and energizing and something that you can brag about when you bring friends over and say, look what I was able to do and you can do it too. Tell them that they can do it too. We would love for that. So ask any and every mule or donkey question that you got. We'll get you answers. And the, the third thing that we ask is you share the broadcast with friends and family. Make sure that the Ask Steve show is not the best kept secret in the mule and donkey world. Uh, as much as we like uh, to you know, be grassroots and, and uh, under the radar, we also like knowing that folks are able to get results when they go out there and, and get to training. And the only way we can get in front of them is with you. And y'all have done such a great job of that over the years. And we just ask you to keep doing that. It's really easy. You click the share button if you're on Facebook or YouTube and you can share the broadcast. Go ahead, leave a comment on uh, on Facebook and tag a friend or family member. Or if you're over there on YouTube, uh, click the like button and then subscribe. And all of that helps get the algorithm working to show our videos to more people. Steve, how have you been, my friend? Alcohol. Algo, algo, algorithm again to cham. Oh, is that the president? Is that this? Oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the newfangled words of this technology like here that. era. Yeah, yeah. They've been doing all right. Uh, we got uh, <laughs> we got old age t attacking us, so we're doing good. My my right hip. I thought I had a problem with my right hip. No, it's my back. L three, L four, and L five. You know the ones. Spine is supposed to look like that. Well, they all look like this. I think it's from hitting on my head too many times. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I, I got that John Wayne walk back. But You'll hey, be I'm okay for the show good. today, though? Oh, yeah. We'll be good. We're, we're well, good. Good. I'm glad to hear it because I know folks are always anxious to hear from you. So it'll be a lot of fun to, uh, to talk a little bit, get caught up a little bit. And before we get uh, any further into today's show... Um, I want to let you all know that uh, over the course of the last six weeks, we've been talking a lot about groundwork, specifically groundwork as it relates to sur single training. You see, you're not going to be riding as much during these winter months, especially in the really cold areas. And folks want to know, well, hey, how do I how do I make use of the time that I've got if I'm not going to be riding? Well, between the sur single, the mule riders, Martingale. And the rope halter, all of that connected with a cinch and uh, britchin, you can do some really incredible foundation training uh, that goes way beyond anything that we do uh, with just the come along rope as it is. Uh, you can get, you can actually get your animal to start framing himself up and get this real nice straightness between the top of the head, top of the withers, uh, top of the hip, and just a real nice straightness. Uh, really respects the rope halter first, and then you move them into the Mule Riders Martingale with the double twisted wire snaffle pit. They start to respect that. Steve, tell me a little bit about why you want folks to be doing that this winter. Well, hey, the mule's going to be standing around anyway, and he's going to be in the mud anyway. So why not put your mud boots on, put the surf single on him, turn him loose? Now, we got some video here a little later on, some pictures. Of, of not a real sunshiny day, but the mule was going to be standing there, so you might as well put the surf single on him, put the halter on him, watch him, learn how to side pass, turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters, which he knows how to do naturally, by the way, all right? 
But all you have to do is what you're going to see in the video, rig him up to win. He's going to be a winner if you rig him up right now. You know, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been kind of fighting this thing, this thought, and because I, I don't really want to pick on anybody per se or go after anybody, which I'm not going to. But I'm going to tell you this, folks. Uh, you can do this training yourself. You really can. I mean, sure, you can also do like one lady did, and you're going to get introduced to her in a couple of weeks here. Uh, she actually found a, a, a lady that wouldn't mind, uh, and, and, uh, and another guy too, wouldn't mind watching my videos, using those techniques and training. And, and it worked. Now, when I talked to her six months ago, I said, look, the, this mule ain't trained. She says, but I spent $18,000 for this mule. Did y'all hear that? $18,000. She gets the mule from up in the northern part of the United States. I'm not going to tell you that it was Washington. And she, <laughs> that she had it delivered down to Florida and then turn around and has paid a trainer now. And, and I understand she's got some, if you, you know, if you've got some illness, you've got some, some uh, uh, problems with arms, legs, and this sort of thing, moving like all of us old folks do, then you know, you don't want to, you know, you're not able to do a lot of the things. But I told her, you need to do groundwork, 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 and get on it, you know, do that. No writing, not nothing for six months. Guess him. Now, after six months, they're able to pretty much catch her, pick up feet, do everything they need to do. This is an $18,000 meal, y'all. Get this in your mind. Supposed to have been trained. And now they spend six months building a foundation, which the mule didn't have. And now they're getting ready to ride. She just ordered a new saddle and stuff. She has a, she's not, her health wise, she doesn't have the health to do it, but she's got a wherewithal when she started watching my training and has found a trainer that would watch this stuff is using my techniques and now they're getting ready to reap the benefits of, of their long labors. You hear that? Six months, folks. Oh, I'm just going to buy a, that's an awful expensive mule, $5,000. I can buy one, but buy one and start it off. But this happened to be people, I don't know if you want to call it dishonest. I don't know if you call it not, not knowledgeable, but anyway, it's a long story and hopefully we can get her on the phone and we can we can talk to her. And I got a couple of other people that I want you to listen to. They did it themselves. And we got some pictures today on Dave on this. Yeah, we sure do. Do you want to get to that now or you wanna you wanna get to Let's that a little some later? Questions, Dave, and, and kind of rock and roll in that a little later. Okay, very think? good. Well, I want to say hello to a few of the folks who have already come in. Uh, Kevin is watching. He says, Merry Christmas, Mr. Steve and your family, Dave, your boys and wife as well. It's cold here in central Kansas. Uh, let's see. Jim says, uh, hello from Western Maryland, 31 degrees and overcast. Jeff is watching, preparing for the below record temperatures in Arkansas, 50 degrees today, five degrees on Friday. Global warming. Goodness Did you gracious. say global warming? Yeah. Yeah. That's, Did you, that, say well, that? you know, you know that it's global warming by how cold it gets. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Mm -hmm. well, the see, cold, yeah, the, the, nephew, the warmer it gets, it's global cooling from the 90s. And the ah. colder it gets, it's global warming. That's how it works. Linda oh. is watching from Ohio. Linda, the mule servant, and Theo, the sweet one-eyed mule in child damp. Laura is watching from Tennessee. Have a Merry Christmas, everyone. Linda, uh, let's see, cold damp central Ohio is what she says. Eileen is watching from Nebraska, it's cold now and it's getting ready for snow. Uh, so uh, good to have you here, Eileen, and hopefully it doesn't get too cold uh, as the temperature drops. Um, let's see here. Steve, I got a question from Lisa. Lisa says, which training videos do I need to have for a five month old mule gelding? He is halter broken only. He is also pushy, mouthy and kicks but doesn't make contact. That sounds like my five-year-old. I need help, she says. What would you say there for Lisa? Okay, folks, listen to the words. Now, I may be a little bit picky on the words, all right? Hear this? Halter broke. That was the old way we used to talk, all right? Now, if we have halter foundation, 
we're not going to have a, a way to kick at you, bitey, pushy, you see? Because in my world, the biting, the pushing, the kicking, and this sort of thing, even though it's a five-year-old and it's normal, in my world, building a foundation, that is not acceptable. That is where the come-along hitch is going to come in handy. And here's the big problem, Dave, and you all hear me talk about this all the time. Here's, here's the deal. It is your timing. I have people tell me all the time, all the time. They say, well, he's not doing it. No, no, it is your timing. Start with small movements. Mule standing right here, all right? And when the mule looks off to the left, bump his nose. If he looks off to the right, bump his nose. If he tries to go away, bump his nose. That all tells this mule, stay straight. Stay looking straight ahead. See? Now, if the mule is already looking over here and you finally bump him over here, it's not the mule's fault. It's your timing, y'all. Your timing. The end of that lead rope is going to teach you how to better communicate with your mule. And when you're working with a five-month-old, they are <laughs> bouncing off the corral walls, okay? It's where they are. Now, you and you build small foundation pieces at a time. Where I would start, come on, rope. Listen, I've taken brand new babies, still in the sack, taken them out of the sack, helped them with their first stand up, put some bailing twine on them, put the come along hitch on them, take them a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. And I'm teaching them before they even get the first suck. And, if, and about 20 seconds later, I give them to mama, you know? So let me tell you folks, this, it, it's time that, that you all start doing this stuff yourself. Because these trainers, okay, which you're going to pay anywhere from uh, $1,200 up, and I know some of them get more than that, okay? You're paying them, and everybody thinks you have to ride them. Get that? You have to ride them to have them train. You don't. So go back to this baby. Never tie a baby up. Never, ever. Use your come along hitch for the next six months constantly every day. And then after that six months, another 50 years. Why is that? You don't need to use that halter all the time. We're relying on that halter. It doesn't teach you your timing. The mule won't stand still while you're brushing it. Why are you tying it up? Why not use a come along hitch and fix the feet? Use the come along hitch. You come out to my place, you can sure y'all have seen me use halters, but you gotta see me do the come along work first, then go into the halter, then go into the bridle and yada yada yada. So, all right, y'all gonna hear me talk about this a lot. Do this yourself. Don't mess with no trainer. There's some good ones out there, but you know what? They're one in a thousand. Yep, one in a thousand. I know that because of what I hear from people and what I know about certain trainers. Yeah, and there's getting to be some good ones. There's some young ones coming up, but we'll rock and roll, huh, Dave? Yeah, so uh, if I understand correctly for Lisa, really just getting the ground foundation starting kit, going through the problem mule video is going to be the best place for her to start now and do that a minimum of six months. And then based upon the behavior and based upon the progress, Maybe reach back out again and ask for, hey, here's what's here's what it's looking like. Where would you recommend that I go? Well, yeah, here's here's here here's my foundational steps. Come along rope, doing foundational training. After about three months training four to six hours a week, I go to my sur single groundwork, starting first with the halter building a foundation there, then going from a halter to Mule Riders Martingale, building a foundation there, the combination of halter and martingale, and then weaning off of the halter, all martingale, weaning off the martingale, going to all bridle, and you never climb on their back. We're going to see here shortly, folks. We're going to see you set your mule up to succeed. They'll turn on the forehand. They'll turn on the hindquarters. They'll stop all that stuff because you start training from the nose. 
if you start to come along work first, go in the surf single, you will see a major, major difference in the softness. Remember that picture we, we, we showed you all last week? Remember that one? Here, this mule was all, all framed up. What was her name here? What was her name? I, let's see here. Virginia? Virginia, yeah. yeah. Virginia. I mean, she did it all herself, Dave. She did it all herself. Yeah. And Virginia, this is the first animal she's ever owned. And look at that mule all framed up and good. And she's in New Mexico, you know. By golly, I'm going to tell you, folks, uh, it, it costs you a lot of money to have a trainer. And people are worried about the riding aspects. Listen, foundational training, you'll see on my videos, coach starting videos, which people need to have, Dave, you know, even if they're starting, even if they have a meal already written, if they watch my coat starting video, there's five people there that have never rode a coat before. There's five coats there, never had anybody on their back. And you'll see them mules, every single one of them riding in a short time because of the ground foundation work they had done. Yeah, that's so, great. Uh, next question. Uh, this one we used to get a lot. I think we talked about it quite a bit, but we haven't talked about it recently. Jeremy sent a message in, and he may very well have called you, Steve, but I wanted to make sure to talk about this here on the on the broadcast. He says, I'm just wondering what the differences are between the trail rider and the rancher saddle. Of course, this is Steve Edwards only saddles. Uh, we don't sell mule saddles. We sell Steve Edwards saddles. Any Yahoo can go out there and create a tag on their printer that says official genuine mule saddle. And, uh, well, I Dang, all you had to have was a computer and a printer. You don't even need that. Just a little tag and a piece of paper. Uh, we don't sell mule saddles. We sell Steve Edwards saddles, and two of those saddles are the Trail Rider and the Rancher. What are the main differences there, Steve? Well, the Trail Rider and the Rancher. The Rancher is a slick fork saddle that was originally designed by Mr. Wade. And this saddle is has a fork on it with a, with a, where the horn is. has a fork on it, like a kind of an A-shape. All right? Or normally, you see the modified association, they pummel, six out like that with the horn coming up right here. Now, that's the main shape of it. The one is a padded seat, which is the trail rider, and the rancher is an unpadded seat. Now, the rancher is what we used to, what I used to ride years ago as well, but I put a set of bucking rows on it, and that's what we wrote. Then the modified association, I got to build a pretty nice tree with that. And I was a lot more happier with that because it locks me in. The, the A fork saddle, the slick fork, the rancher, doesn't lock you in. You have to put a set of bucking roses on it to keep yourself in the saddle. It's a more expensive saddle to make because the tree is so much more unique. And it's a more expensive to make because of the leather, the patterns and stuff are so much more different. But it's made after a buckaroo style saddle. And, uh, and it's, it's a good looking saddle. But it's looks, folks. It's looks. Uh, is, is it going to perform any different than any of my other saddles? No. Okay. But if you like a certain look, then, and you want to be different, then there you go. Next question we've got, this one comes from Kiki. Kiki writes in, says, I've been watching your videos and I've been bitten by the mule bug. Haven't we all, Kiki? I've ridden horses all my life, but I'm sure uh, I can make the transition. I'm aware how important breeding is and am keen to know where I can begin to search for a suitable mule. Also, assuming I locate such an animal, how do I know what size saddle I would use? I would want the ultralight and I use a 16 inch English hunt seat saddle. Thank you for your help in advance. What would you say to Kiki, Steve? Well, you know, the, the trail light is, uh, the, the ultralight is all leather. It only weighs 20 pounds. And, um, and you know, it's sure a nice saddle. Now, this leather, we, uh, we get it in from Argentina. We, it's pre-dyed. It's just really fine leather. And why is that, Steve, that you get it from Argentina? Because our government won't let the good leather companies, other leather companies make leather here without giving them all kinds of hate and discontent. The, the leather companies that are here now that are doing it, they have to go through all kinds of stuff and 
their leather is a lot more expensive. Is it some quality stuff? Yes. But I'm going to tell you, this Argentina leather is great. I beat it to death, uh, and it looks good. Awesome. Uh, next question is, oh, you know what she said, though? How do I know which size seat to get? Well, you know, here's the thing. Uh, and it's, it's not a matter of being rocket scientist and be it right on the money. If she's riding a 16 in a flat saddle, she most likely is going to be riding a 16 in a, in a Western saddle. But here's the thing. When you sit in a Western saddle, and we've got some videos on this, you always, always, always never put your feet in the stirrups so that you actually hang natural. Guys tend to slouch. Gals tend to sit straight up in the saddle. Okay. Some people like a tight saddle. Some people like a loose saddle. So all you can do is you, you make a general guess. So uh, most likely I would say 16 inch saddle. But now you have to also remember that when you're riding English, you're, you're riding a lot off your legs. You're posting a lot. So you're a lot more up off of the saddle riding English. So uh, no matter how I say this, the ladies, Dave, it's not a matter of how big your rump is. It's a matter, it's a matter of how your thighs are. So I'm, <laughs> I know I'm barking up two different trees there, thighs and rumps, but that's kind of the way it is. So uh, I would stay, you know, I would probably try a 16 inch Go to the uh, Western stores and set in a couple of them. Remember, a padded seat more works for the ladies because they have those little uh, in their bottom that the fills pin the bones seat. in their in their rear. Yeah, yeah. And so I've got some ladies that have five or six pads. One day they're going to ride wool. One day they're going to ride perforated neoprene, and they change around. Plus, it's already a padded seat. So you don't know. Okay, but here's the deal, Dave. I took a lady in Montana, had several saddles all set out, all on saddle trees. Okay, I mean, on saddle stands. And we just got them put in the trees on the different mules. And uh, we had just got them. Uh, let me grab this here a second, Dave. It looks like I'm a, a little gnarly here for a second. Let me hook in my. While Steve's doing that, some of y'all don't realize Steve DJs on the weekends. He goes by the name DJ Donkey. <laughs> Rumps and Thighs is his brand new song. So if you uh, if you all get out there and see Steve uh, DJing, you can hear that. New <laughs> no. No. Okay, so here it is. This lady goes up, and I've got a lot of people here. We're talking. We're looking at saddles. She says, I want to sit on your saddle and see if which one suits me. And I said, sure, go ahead. So she sits down. She's scooting her little hind end all around, just kind of figuring things out. And, you know, just kind of, oh, okay. And I'm talking to the other people and visiting with them and answering questions. Finally, I look over to her and I say, how's that saddle doing for you? I don't know. This saddle, I just don't think it's going to work out for me. And I said, oh, well, go down here. Let's come on down here about five saddles down, set in that saddle and tell me what you think. She goes down, she climbs in the saddle. Again, I'm talking with people and I'm teaching people and this sort of thing. And finally, I look over at her and I says, how's that saddle doing? Oh, man, this is perfect. I really, oh, this saddle is just right. And I said, ma'am, that saddle is the same saddle you just set in the first time. The difference is the saddle stand in the first one you set in was wider. The saddle stand you're setting in here is narrower. All of my trees are the same. All of them are, folks, okay? If the saddle isn't fitting you, you may want to think about how wide your mule is or you may figure out how your your legs are in the stirrups. That's one of the biggest problems, folks, is my stirrups swing. They move. But if you will take the time, get this, take the time to learn where your leg needs to be, it's amazing how the difference will be riding that saddle. So... There's my little story, Dave. I'm going to stick to it. That sounds great. Uh, let's on Facebook. Uh, Laura is watching. Eileen. Uh, Barbara is here. Hi, Stephen Dave from Sullivan, uh, Missouri. Not too cold now, but it will be Thursday and Friday. Uh, I've been, uh, I have been my Molly on groundwork and with the Sir single, but I'm so nervous about letting her sit through the winter without getting in the saddle 
and then riding in the spring. Steve, what do you want to say? Is this the is this the same barber that we have the videos from? I think so. Barbara White? Uh, this one's Barbara Vansel. Oh, Barbara Vansel. Let's see here. Uh, let me see here. I think it's... Yeah, well, okay, okay. She was a Barbara White, too. But oh, this okay. Is Barbara All right. Vansel. All right, All right, very good, very good. Uh, okay. Do you want me to go ahead and throw up the vi the, the photos sure. there and stuff? You okay. betcha. There you go. All right, so here it is, Sir Single Work. Folks, it's not important to ride. It's not. It's important that this mule gets soft. Now notice where the halter is. And notice there's baling twine. Nothing else, no weight. I don't want any weight on there. The baling twine is all I need. And what's going to happen is, when the mule keeps bumping his nose, like right now, notice in the uh, left picture how the mule is looking off to the left, okay? And the right picture, the mule's kind of straight up and down. That's okay. Notice where the surcingle is, more in the middle of the body. All the surcingle is for is to be able to have a place to put your baling twine, which hooks into the breaching, which keeps the surcingle from being pulled forward. That's what it is, okay? Now notice, she's getting the mule rigged up. It's gloomy, it's winter, uh, and but, you know, why not? If the mule's gonna stand, let's train. Now let's look at some end result, Dave. Okay, watch this mule. It's gonna turn on the forehand. Front end going places, see the back end go around. Do that again, Dave. Watch the back end come around, front end get prepared, the front end prepared. That's called turn on the forehand, where the front end stays in place and the back end moves over. Now watch next. Turn on the forehand. Now watch the mule side pass. That's side passing. There's nobody on his back. Barbara, why do you want to get in the saddle? You're teaching your mule all the basics. And when you look at that mule side pass, look at that. And when you climb in a saddle, all you got to do is know how to move your legs and your hands because you're already teaching your mule side pass. Y'all see that? How many people are paying attention, Dave? Look at this. Turn on the forehand. Front end stays in place. Back end moves over. Then what do we see? Watch this. Turn the front end. Front end stays in place. Back end comes around. Is there anybody on the back? Now look. Now we're side passing. Look at the crossover of the feet. Let's just turn on the forehand. Boom. Now watch the side pass. See that? See that left front one cross over and that left rear one cross over? Watch. That's turn on that's side passing. Turn on the forehand. Watch. Side pass. Side pass. Oh no, there's nobody on its back. How's a mule gonna learn? Because you set the surf single up, because you're training from the nose, you all. When you train, look at the mule drop his head. Look, preparation, head's dropped. That means the whole mule is soft. That, look at the head up right now. now. Watch, he bumps the halter. The, the, ah, look. See when the head's down, you get what you need to do. And notice, nobody's on his back. That's what we're looking for. Now what we gotta do now is get Barbara to communicate using her hands or legs. By the time, <laughs> <clears throat> you get ready to ride this mule barber in the spring. You doing what you're doing here. You'll be in the bridle, in the bit, and the mule will be doing some of the same stuff. Does everybody see that? Look at this. Turn on the forehand. Back end moves over. Side pass, side pass, side pass. Now let's go to the other picture, Dave. Watch this mule side pass. Y'all see that? Watch it again. There's a head down drop first. Getting in preparation. Look at the side pass. You see that? That's a side pass, y'all. Notice how the legs are crossing in behind the others. Or as they progress and do better, cross in front of the others. That right there is side pass. Watch. There we go. Notice the head drops first. That's in preparation. So the mule's got his back right, got everything all squared away. There's the head. There's the head drop down a little bit more and it'll get better and better and better and better. Now, 
she needs to tighten up her quarter strap. That's the strap coming from the end of the breeching up to the uh, surcingle. And then you see that the baleen twine then hooks to the same place as the breeching does. So you see this, Barbara? Look, your mule is side passing. Turn on the forehand and you're not in back. So the day you go to get on, all you got to do then, listen, folks, the mule is now soft in the face. When you see that, you're not going to see most trainers do that. Most trainers don't. They all, and here's why. Because most folks want to see them ridden. Riding is not the important part. Okay? My grandmother's Aunt Tilly can probably ride better than most folks. All right? And I don't have an Aunt Tilly. But anyway, uh, here, here's the deal. You see how that mule is set up to succeed. The mule has an adjusted rope halter. He's got bailing twine. That's not no weight. That's not somebody pulling on them, yanking on them, splitting their tongues and everything. No, no. You see that? Then we go from there to the Martindale. I can't wait to see what uh, what Barbara's going to do, what Barbara's going to do when you get the surf single in there. It's going to be pretty awesome. And, and I'll talk to her and show her how to move them around and stuff. But it's all in the videos right there. Steve, have you heard about this new thing called Chat AI? No. AI, I'm usually lifting up the tail of a cow and rubbing my arm. <laughs> so some folks, folks, uh, go ahead and in the comment section, say if you've heard about chat AI or just the, the AI phenomenon in general. It's artificial intelligence, this one is. And uh, you can type in anything you want, Steve, anything at all. And so I just said, write a song about mules. Listen to what this computer wrote. Mules are strong and sure. They plow the fields and carry the load. From dawn to dusk, they work and endure with a spirit that never seems to fade. Mules, mules, the workhorses of the land. Mules, mules, with a heart so grand. Through the fields and valleys they roam. Mules, mules, never losing hope. Verse 2. Mules have a stubborn strength, but it's only because they know what they need. They take, may take their time, but in the end, they'll get the job done indeed. Mules may not be flashy or fast, but they're reliable and they're built to last. They may not get the praise they deserve, but they're an integral part of the earth. What do you think about that, Steve? Well, isn't that incredible? <laughs> Written by a computer. Written by a computer. Well, the born in old Kentucky and others raised in Tennessee, you'll find them in Wyoming, but that's not the only place they'll be. They're working up in Idaho and Oregon and such. And Sierras of California, well, you find them by the bunch. Well, you can ride and you can drive and you can pack. When it comes to versatility, there's nothing that they lack. Some folks say they're stubborn, but you'll only hear that from a fool. Because the animal that's the best of them all is definitely the mule. Yeah. And oh, yes, the donkey too. Oh, yeah. I pick I pick real life over artificial intelligence. I choose oh, yeah. real life. Artificial anything, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hey, uh, let's hop back over onto Facebook. Uh, we've got, oh, oh, here we go. Oh. Okay, let me get it queued up. I don't have it ready. And now I've got it ready. Uh, Mr. David Scholl. Good Aussie morning. David Scholl. Dave Scholl. Coming into us live from the land down under. Good to have you here, David. So good to have you here. Uh, I got the hat on. He's got the hat on. Uh, are you going to be seeing them anytime soon, Steve? Oh, that's a good cue, Dave. Good job. Yes. David and and Di are coming to da, 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 the United States. First, they're going to go to Bishop because they got some friends there. I try to tell them don't go. But anyway, then they're going to come up to. Ready for this? Superior, Montana, for our annual summer meal-a-thon. Meal We're going to call it, Are You Listening to Your Mule and Donkey? And Dave and Di are coming. Now, get this. It's Di's birthday. And since Dave is such a good husband, he give her a trip. He says, Steve, if I'm going to come to the United States, I need to do a Steve Edwards clinic. So just for Di... I made up this date to fit Di and Dave's schedule. We were talking about dates. Uh, Ron and I from Montana Rancher up there. Superior, Montana. Get this written down, folks. First weekend of June. 
Weather's going to be awesome. We're going to do three days of, are you listening to your mule and donkey? I'm going to teach you some details. I'm going to teach you some fine things. And it's going to be awesome. Now, I'm not greedy, folks. I, I'm not in this for money. I want you all to get that in your mind. I love mules. And I love people who spend time. This is what I'm going to do. It's what I do to all of my clinics. I'm going to cut it off at 10 people. That's going to bring their mules or their donkeys. 10. I'm going to give you a little secret. Maybe 12 if somebody says a real pretty please. But otherwise, 10. And, it, and as you all know, I help each one of you. I spend time. I don't have you go around in a circle and watch the mules screwing up and watch the people screwing up. And all they're interested in is watching them go around in a circle. I don't do that. I take you individually as I see you. As you make a mistake or as you do good, I pat you on the back or I say, try this. Yeah, yeah. So, Dave, we're going to have a ball. Uh, this is all primitive camping. Primitive. There are hotels close within about 20 miles. But bring your tents, bring your sleeping bags, bring your motor homes, your whatever you got, and come and you get to meet Dave and Di, true Aussies. I went to Australia and spent time with them over there, and I'm looking forward to the future going there. But anyway, there you are, Dave. We've done it. Awesome. Very good. That sure is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, definitely hope that y'all will uh, join us. And I've got a, uh, I've got a, uh, a, a link here that I want to send y'all. If you are not currently receiving emails from Steve and you'd like to know when registration opens up for this next clinic uh, in Montana, um, register here. Click the link that I just put in the comment section. You can register for a notification as soon as those go live. You put in your name, your phone number, and your email address. And as soon as registration is open, we'll send you a message and uh, make sure you all get the information that you need so you can make a decision. Uh, give us those dates one more time, Steve. What did you say it was? That would be the first weekend of June. Uh, Friday, June 2nd to Sunday, June 4th. Y'all come in on Thursday. Uh, and then Steve will do a, a, a talk on Thursday evening, right, Steve? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Friday to Sunday, it's gonna be it's gonna be clinic, it's gonna be answers, it's gonna be fun. So uh, y'all can go ahead and pencil that into your calendar right now, and we'll get the information up so you can register. Hopping back over onto uh, Facebook and YouTube. Yep, doing my little dance. Coming back over onto this side. Uh, Roger is watching from M Milan, New York, where it's 28 and breezy. Uh, hey, Mr. Mark Williams from Virginia, where it's 40 degrees and cold. Good to have you here. Uh, Mr. McGee watching uh, in the cold forest, Ontario, Canada, negative five Celsius here today. Big storm coming on Friday, and I'll tell you what, we sure are glad that you are here today. You get the block and spiel, Mr. McGee. Uh, Catherine is watching from southern Louisiana. We are preparing for a freeze down here. Stay warm. Polly is watching from Barnesville, Minnesota, negative 11 and very cold. Um, I, I totally get that. Uh, it's out, out here where we're at. Uh, it is, I mean, it's 60 degrees, like 62 degrees. I'm having to go out there and shovel sunshine every single morning. It is just oh, killing me. I'm being, yeah. I'm being, I'm being facetious. Y'all come on out to Arizona and visit the, the Valley of the Sun. Uh, it is just gorgeous out here. This is why folks are like, why do you live out there during those summers? Well, for this, this is why we live out here. Uh, let's see. Anna is watching. Uh, Lois is watching. David Pingelli. Hey, Mr. Come Along Coffee himself. Uh, what is Come Along Coffee? Well, it is the coffee for the mule man and the mule woman. Uh, Mr. David Pengelly has Coffee by David, um, and uh, he made a special blend of coffee. Comes in three uh, flavors: Ask, Tell, and Demand. And uh, it is uh, it is it is a favorite. It is a fan favorite. It is a Queen Valley Mule Ranch favorite. I'll put a link in the comment section. Uh, Y'all can get your own come along coffee and uh, enjoy that. Linda says, I help teach AI pro programs. We say that AI stands for artificial idiots. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Very good, Linda. I am going to use that. Emily's hey, hey. watching from North Carolina, 34. Barbara says, thank you, thank you. It was Barbara White, but I got married. Now it's Barbara Vansell. We have been working hard on the ground foundation. Uh, Derek has a question. 
can you talk about how to age a mule? What do you mean by aging a mule, Steve? Well, th they have teeth uh, on the side and they have teeth in the front. And then there's an area. Well, let's see here. How am I going to do that? Yeah, it looks like this here. Okay. Now, these, there's an area between the, the canine on a John mule, okay, and no canine on a Molly mule. And you have your front teeth here, which are the incisors. And depending on their age is going to depend on how many teeth are out here in the front. And then as we look at the side, this is the bar, and then we have the molars back here. Now, to look at the tooth, there's a tooth on the side that really sticks out. And of course, it's white, but then there's kind of a line, a groove that's coming down it. You'll see it, it's going to stick out. The wider that line is, the older the mule is, the more it comes down the tooth, the older the mule is. Put on there, go, go to the internet. There's a lot of good dentists have put information out there and put out there how to age a mule. And they'll tell you, it's really difficult for me to tell you uh, having, uh, not having the teeth and this sort of thing to point at, but it's called the Galvin's groove. Write it down. I, I'm probably pronouncing it incorrect. It's called the Galvin's Group. Put that on the put that on the uh, on the internet and say Galvin's Groove, and you'll be able to come up with it. And that's one of the ways that you can age them. Okay, now number one thing, folks. Now here I am taking a, a teachable moment. Number one thing: float the teeth. Yep, every year. I don't care what the veterinarian says. Test it yourself. Take the upper part of the jaw with the jaw with the nose lower part of the jaw and move it back and forth. I'm over exaggerating here, but move it back and forth. And if you hear scraping or if you feel catching, that is because the teeth, the molars are pointed. All right. And they need to all look like that straight across rather than looking like this. So you file this off straight. And they're all nice and straight, and then you won't bind, and you won't hear the grinding as much. So um, that's number one thing you should do. All right, very good. Uh, hopping back over onto uh, Facebook and YouTube, Miss Backwoods is here. Northern Maine, thirty degrees. We just had four days of snow, eighteen inches. Stacy is watching from Colorado, prepping for negative seventeen temperatures. Burr. Merry Christmas, guys. Appreciate what you do. Well, thank you, Stacy. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Miss Backwoods, uh, ha Lois is watching from Central. Hey, we got two folks from Maine watching today. How about that? I love it. Uh, Miss Backwoods says, my 20-month-old mule. She saw her first moose a few weeks back. She spooked, and it took over one hour to get her back into the stall. What is the best way to approach this situation? I'll take this one, Steve. What you want to do is you want to go out. You want to capture a moose. And you want to bring that moose to your farm. And then you want to search the internet for the phrase desensitization training or desensitizing training. And then you'll be desensitized to a moose. I don't, moose. I don't know what to tell you if you encounter a mountain lion. Suppose you'll have to go capture a mountain lion or a bear or whatever's next. But you'll be corrected for the moose. Steve, how did I do? You know what, Dave? You're a chip off the old Steve. <laughs> there you go. Let me let me let me let me give you a little bit of thought here, folks. John Lyons. How many of you heard of John Lyons? Wonderful Christian man, good trainer, him and his family. Matter of fact, his daughter lives over here. Oh, pardon me. About 25 miles from here. Had a lady come up to him and say, John, you've got to do something about my horse. It's it keeps running through barbed wire. And it's getting all these vet bills, and it's really expensive. He said, hmm, running through barbed wire. Well, why does it run through barbed wire? Well, moose keeps jumping over the fence, 
and into the corral. And then the horse says, I'm going through the fence because that's the way horses think. Yeah. And they get all cut up and they're a mess. And he said, I got to thinking about this desensitizing, Steve. I don't have a moose to train with. Um, matter of fact, folks, how many of you got, like Jay, Dave was saying, how many have got a, a mountain lion, a giraffe? That's the idea of tigers, lions. Listen, I put together the first horse equine program in the nation, probably in the world, at the Phoenix Zoo. And guess what? They pull wagons around that zoo. And guess what? I had to train those guys not to pay attention to a moose, not to pay attention, I mean, to a giraffe or lions or anything like that. And how did I do it? Started out with come along hitch. Pay attention to me. That's what I did. Folks, you cannot desensitize, okay? Just because a turkey flew up and scared it, listen, that's part of it. It's part of being on an equine. An equine is an equine. They are the bottom of the food chain. It's flight and fright. That's what kicks in. Flight because of fright. You're not going to stop that. Oh, unless you've got a good foundation and you have the right equipment on. Then you're going to help stop it. Not 100% guaranteed, but you're going to help. <coughs> it's kind of like having good brakes on your car. If you've got good brakes on your car, you're going to stop right. Okay? But keep this in your mind, folks. You cannot desensitize. You cannot show them everything so that there'll never be a problem. There's always going to be problems. That's why I tell you, do it yourself. What would I do? I'd forget about the moose. Okay? Forget about the turkeys. Focus on being straight. Teach your mule to be straight. Use the come along rope, go over stuff, create all kinds of trails. Trails from the ground, from the ground, using the come along hitch. From the ground, sir single. Forget about desensitizing. Listen, when we used to go to Bishop, we had good meals. First time we went was with the Grand Canyon. We had good meals. I mean, these meals were solid. You know what they didn't have there at the Grand Canyon? 10,000 people screaming and yelling at Bishop. What did they have? They didn't have all the blaring music. Now, we had, we tried that stuff. We tried to make crowd noises. We had banners flying. We had loud music going on, but we didn't have 10,000 people. And we didn't have people throwing things and doing things and moving their hands around. We didn't have that. So when we took the Grand Canyon mules to Bishop, things blew up. It was a mess. We lost the first few times we were there. Okay. Uh, anyway, long story short is this. It's your timing. Your timing. You watching my videos now, especially the packing video, you'll see all those mules and donkeys coming to me. Why is that? I taught them that under pressure, I was a safe place. So once my horse come to me, all the other mules came with the horse. We were the first one out. Packed five mules out of three horses. Went around a half mile track in five minutes, 42 seconds. Yeah, we did that. Okay. Well, let me start with ground foundation work. Ground. There you go. And hey, Dave, by the way, when I was talking about the teeth, I just pulled it up on the internet. It's called the Galvin's Groove. G-A-L-V-I-N Groove. G-R-O-V-E. Horse aging. And go over there, you can see pictures and talks about all kinds of stuff. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Stacy says Galvin's Groove, so she just came in right there. Derek says, thank you so much, Steve. John is watching. John and Christina from Dunmore, Kentucky, 40 degrees and getting cold. Uh, David Pingelli says, Steve, for a mule, every day is different. Um, hopping over on to a message that came in uh, last week says, um, Carmen's watching says, I have a three and a half year old Molly mule that was recently biting her flanks and kicking out. I called the vet to check for colic. Her gut sounds were decent. She was not dehydrated and her poop looked good. We treated for colic anyway, just in case we did notice she was in heat. So I was wondering if you've ever had a mule act that way while in heat. She is all, she also seems to be quivering some when she trots not when she's standing. I don't know if that's something you have experienced before as well. Any help would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, I've seen them bite their sides before. I've seen them chew on their tails. 
most of the time, uh, I I think it's a vitamin deficiency myself. You always want to check your vitamins and minerals. Do a hair follicle test or do a blood test to see what they are lacking in. Most of the time, they're lacking in zinc. Okay, that's the thing, folks. You've got to feed them properly. Uh, now, yes, they do some funny things when they come in heat. They sure do. Uh, and whether or not that's one of them or not, I can't really tell you. I can tell you, though, if you feed the right minerals and you feed, feed the right feed, uh, that's, that problem doesn't seem to come around. So get a, uh, a hair, follicle, hair follicle test and see what happens. Awesome. Very good. Uh, let's see here. Hopping over on to, give me a second. I had another one. I'm trying to get into the comment section here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Here we go. Uh, Marsha sent a message. Says, "I'm in Virginia and it's kind of cold and cloudy here. I myself want a low cantle. My leg seems to get hung up there. If the cantle is high when I dismount or mount, I always felt trapped, even when I was younger and rode a lot. Do you have a certain reason that your cantles are really high?" My cantles are high because it gives you, especially for long hours in the saddle, it gives you support. That's the big thing that you've got to have. You right, you watch the old cowboys, the old cowboy videos. They all had high, had high cantles and a lot of weight slip forks. So here's the thing. You might want to think about the type of boots that you got and the type of sole. And you also might want to think about maybe you don't have your, your fender up high enough. Come up one, one hole with your fender and see if you can swing your leg over and also see if that gives you a little bit of bend in your leg, which you need anyway uh, when you're riding so that you can accurately uh, ride with, ride with uh, a good equitation. All right, very good. Steve, I think that's pretty much everything. Oh, here we go. Uh, Miss Backwood says, what are your thoughts on, we have two more that came in. What are your thoughts on toys for young mules while they are in their stall? You know, a, a lot of people are doing that, Dave. I and a lot of animals play with it at first. Uh, what you want to be careful, though, I, I've heard and I haven't seen it of animals actually digesting some of that plastic after they chewed through it, and that's not good. Uh, you might give it a try. The uh, best thing I can tell you is um, put a surf signal on them and train on them. Don't don't play with toys. Put a surf signal on. Put a rope halter on them. Turn them loose. Let them learn. If they're going to be busy, give them a job. Next question that come in, this was from Frank. He says, what is the best uh, minimal to feed? What does minimal mean? Probably mineral. Oh, mineral. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's say, Frank, well, is that what it is? You could talk about what the best mineral is, Steve, and then Frank yeah. can give us some clarity. Yeah, don't, don't waste your time buying mineral blocks, folks. That's money you don't need to spend. Get a, a hair follicle test, get a blood sample test, however your vet does it, and see what vitamins and minerals your meal is sly on, and then buy that vitamin and mineral and give it to them accordingly. Because here's the downside, folks. You don't know what's in that hay. You know, uh, Ron from up in Montana just had salmonella poison with one of his meals. He was able to pull it through with some banamine and some oil, but salmonella poison is very, very important and because people think it's colic and it's not. So get, get the, get the test. That's the best way to do it. Hey, did David Pengali tell you about his thoughts about a t-shirt we're going to do? You sent that to me a little bit earlier today. That's pretty fun. Yeah. We're going to do a t-shirt. Hey, originally we kind of said, it said every day is a different day for a meal, but I think we're going to switch around and say, for a meal, every day is a different day. And we're going to do up a t-shirt, uh, and, and it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, and by, by next week, this time, we ought to have uh, an end result. But t do you have a picture of it there, Dave? Uh, I don't have it brought up handy. Um, okay. I, uh, if, if I can, I'd like I could... people to take a look at it and tell me what they'd like to make in the way it changes. And then uh, we can look at maybe producing something. Those people, are, I've been had some people wanted to get some type of t-shirt. I thought, well, why not? It sounds good. 
for, uh, for a meal, every day is a different day, which it is. <coughs> I'm looking to see if I can bring it up here. Okay, I got it. Give me a second. Okay. We're still here. We didn't go anywhere. Um, right here. See, I do all this stuff before we go live. Sorry, right. Dave. Ad hoc. Oh, I've got an extra thing for you. Got an extra thing for There you go. Y'all kind of take a glance at that. And this will kind of give you a general idea. Tell me what, tell us what you like and what you don't like. I can tell you for sure we're going to change the wording saying for a meal, every day is a different day. Or y'all let me know if you like it the way it says it there now. Okay. Um, would you rather not see the circle in the meal? Would you like to see, I don't know, tell me, tell us. David Pangali kind of started this the other day. And when he said this, and I says, where'd you get that? He said, I've been hearing you say it all the time. <laughs> That's funny. That's very good. Y'all, uh, yes. So Frank says, yes, it was uh, it was minerals that he was looking for. So very good there. Hey, so uh, before we go, Steve, um, you wanted to, to share a little something here. Folks, you see this man here? I went today to his his father's homecoming. He passed away about a week ago. And when you come to know Christ as your savior, it's a homecoming. And this man here is a three-star general. Three-star general. He didn't woke it out. He talked about Jesus. He talked about Jesus. And he doesn't just do it because his dad uh, had passed away. His whole family, grandkids, wives, everybody, got up and talked about how much their grandpa, which had passed away, talked about Jesus. And this man right here, 30 years in the Green Beret, y'all. So we're not just talking about just the army. We're talking about the elite army. And you can see all that stripes and everything on there. You don't get that by sitting in an office. He did two tours, one in Afghanistan for a year and one in Iraq for a year. He also helped, get this folks, helped broker the Israel-Palestinian deal. He speaks fluent uh, Arabic and he speaks fluent Korean. Imagine that, Dave. But I had the honor of being there. Now, his dad uh, would come to my Bible study every Thursday night. We have a Bible study over at the church that I teach for adults. and We open the Bible and we talk about the Bible. And his dad would go and visit the family in California or visit the, the family in Texas and say, man, I got this Bible study I go to, I really enjoy. And now this man, uh, who you see here in front of you, Eric, uh, last name is Went. I really had a hard time trying to call him by his first name because being brought up in the military, I was always, it was yes, sir, no, sir. And we use last names only uh, as a form of respect. But this man here, humble, but a man of God, wow, phenomenal. So I, I, I went there today and it was amazing to hear the whole family talk about Jesus. And, and I'm not very subliminal, Dave, when it comes down to this stuff. You and I both know. But this man here, he put his arm around me and prayed with me. Now, I'm telling you, he is, he is uh, either 6'8 or 6'9. So I'm literally underneath his armpit. Huge man. Huge man. He put his arm around with me and prayed with me. And Dave, I tell you what, that was so uplifting. But it, it, was, it was a pleasure to hear a man of his stature. And you wouldn't believe it. I mean, if, if you go over and, and put in his name, folks, okay, Eric Went, W-E-N-D-T, and see what Wikipedia says about him. It is phenomenal what he's done, okay? And, and, and he has committed himself to a savior and he's committed himself to the United States. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool folks. We're so grateful that you choose to spend a little bit of time with us each and every week. This is our last program for the year. I'm going to be out of town uh, next week. I'm going to be celebrating uh, just a week off with my family. We're going to be doing a day in the snow. I'm sure Steve has 
lots of things he's going to be working on well. So uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us. We'll be back during the new year. Steve, is there anything you want to say before we're all done today? No, just remember, folks, there's a reason for the season, and it dang sure ain't Santa Claus. That's good. I'm down with that. All right, y'all. God bless. Enjoy the holiday. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas.